All right, yeah, now we're gonna play around with uh, the attack helicopters in the game. Um, straight off from the bat in the starting boxes, you get hind helicopters in the Potemkin's Bear and uh, Cobra helicopters in Bannon's Boys uh, starter box, two of each. Uh, the guys here for this uh, boot camp have uh, got some extra helicopters to play around with. So the Americans have four at Cobra attack helicopters and the Russians have six hinds. Uh, not gonna use that many for, for this little intro because it might be a little bit overpowering, but we're gonna have fun with uh, uh, some helicopters anyway. Um, okay, so helicopters counts as aircraft, of course. Um, you have three different kinds of teams in the game, infantry, tanks and aircraft, and helicopters are counted as aircraft. They are always on the table, they don't go off the table. Fixed wing aircraft like the A-10s and SU-25s will go off and on the table as you roll it. But the helicopters stay there until they are either dead or have broken off because they take too much losses or they have won the game well, something like that. Um, they have basically a move where they can go anywhere on the table. So it's not like tanks and the, the ground slogging stuff that they have to have different kind of moves and so on. They can go anywhere on the table and they have all sorts of weapons. They have an automatic uh, Gatling machine gun in the front. They have various pods on the sides here with uh, uh, anti-tank missiles, salvo weapons and, and stuff like that. So they have an awful lot of destructive firepower. Uh, one thing with them though, in this game you actually always can see aircraft. You can't have it blocked off by anything, like this hill is too high, or oh, my helicopter is hiding behind this building or something like that. Uh, they can always be seen, though the Cobras have a rule that is called Hunter Killer, which counts that they are popping down behind tall terrain, like woods buildings and so on, and can then pop up, shoot their missiles, and go back down again. So that's a difference, and that makes them being able to, if they're close enough from that tall terrain, they can keep hidden or concealed, rather. Uh, if they haven't shot, they even got the gun to ground and becomes even harder to hit. So they are sneaky, they are sort of a sniper helicopter in this case. The hind is counters as always moving, will not hide behind anything or anything like that. It'll go straight in and try to kill whatever it needs to kill, basically. So in this case, I've set up a few. There's a couple of Heinz coming flying in over here. There's a couple of T-72s, a couple of M1s, and two Cobras doing the hunter killer thing behind these silos here. Uh, let's say it's the American's turn and he wants to shoot. He's sitting over here behind these and he says, ah, well, I'd probably rather shoot the Heinz right now than go for the tanks just yet. So, from this range here, he doesn't want to move up for, to them because that would just be a little bit too brutal because aircraft can shoot, any weapon can shoot against aircraft in the other player's turn. And that means if it went up to auto cannon range, which is eight inches, the Russians would in that case probably shoot before him and he would take losses. So a lot of it will be missile dueling until you get an uh, advantage in numbers for the helicopters. Uh, in this case, um, the Cobra have improved tow missiles, which have a minimum range of eight. So it's no problem with the minimum range and a maximum range of 48. So that's no problem either. So they pop up, shoot two tow missiles against the Russians. They need three plus to hit. Remember, there's no concealment for this. He shoots, he scores a five and a four, two hits. Um, these guys are quite sturdy, so they save some four plus. So we roll that one, a four, so he bounces off. And the other one, a three, not quite so good. So he's hit by a tow missile. The tow missile have a five power of three. And he rolls a six, and this one goes down in flames. 
that would mean for this case, he's just one operable aircraft, so he would need to roll a motivation check straight off. He has a morale of three plus, and he would roll a two, so he would fly off. In case that they would have made it, or none of them would have been shot down, uh, it would have been okay. So, but you can see how lethal it can be. There's a few shots. You can get rid of the opponent's aircraft quickly, or they can remain. It depends. If they would have remained, the Russians on their turn would go something like over here. Again, being careful not going too close to get into the Gatling range yet, because the Cobras have a nasty habit of hovering and then they can use the full halter rate of fire, which is six, with their Vulcan Gatling guns. And you don't really want to come close to that until you are really a lot more helicopters than they are. Uh, so what the Russians are trying to do now is getting their uh, 86 spiral missiles into them. Uh, it's a relatively short range for being a guided missile weapon. It's 20 inches, but that's no problem here. And as you have the move anywhere you want, you can always go to the right range. Uh, Shoot that, targeting him. I would say because there is a tree in the way, the Cobras, they can't claim gun to ground because they shot last time, but they would still be content concealed because of the hunter-killer capability and being inside four inches of the tall terrain around here. So they hit on fives. We have one miss and one hit. The Cobra, though, being not so sturdy as the Heinz, saves on a five. He would roll a five, so he would be okay. If he would have missed, then he would roll a firepower, and a Cobra would have been shot down. So, quite, quite straightforward. Let's face it, if one had been shot down, i remove that here, and let's say the American player said, oh, okay, I'm, I'm really gonna try to just get in, in, into close range and, and, and duel it out there, and it might be the last turn, and the players are maybe tired and want to go home by this stage. So he would just go, I will charge in and just go shooting with the guns. So he puts himself like that, the Russians say, oh, so you want to come here, do you? <laughs> Turns up, gets his 12.7 uh, Jack B Gatling gun, which, as it's Heinz, they always count on moving, always have movement rate to fire, so it's free each. He rolls and it's four plus to hit a Cobra. He would hit four times, no, three times. The Cobra's aircraft side is five plus. He would save two of them, one of them. And then the machine gun firepower is five plus for the, for the Heinz. So it would be enough, he would have shot him down. If he had rolled a four there instead of four and a three, oh, the Cobra would have made it. He would be shooting his moving rate of fire, which is also three. He would have scored two hits, one each basically. Uh, save on him, he would have failed that, taken a firepower, he would have succeeded, and he would have made that. Uh, he would have failed the save, and would the firepower would have saved. So the firepower on the machine gun is not great, so you can have a lot of towing and throwing between them. But if you roll your fives and you've gone up to the machine gun distances, basically. It will be a lot of firing and either side will go down eventually. It just depends on what you roll and the numbers of it involved in it, so to speak. So those kind of things. Uh, any questions about anything on that part? We got a question here on Periscope. Uh, are troops allowed to deploy from the helicopters? Uh, yes, they are. The Heinz have a limited number of troops they can have with them. And uh, basically they have to land, wait a turn, and then they can uh, get troops up. It's one team <laughs> per helicopter when it comes to Heinz. 
there might be in the future pure air landing companies coming up with different helicopters and doing a whole air landing kind of thing. So yes, you can do that and it's, it's already factored in there. It is definitely. Obviously it is cobor environment to go and flying about with helicopters and landing in such an anti-air rich environment is a dangerous job. So I'm not saying it will not be bloody, but it will be a lot of fun to play at least. Uh, okay. After shooting your uh, AA, you can't shoot again, right? Uh, that's right. If you sh choose to shoot in the opponent's turn, you can't shoot on your own turn and so on. But if the helicopters are gone up straight off dueling, then you almost have to take any chance to shoot first, basically. That's why I think we will see in most of our games this weekend and, and subsequent games before all the other AA and stuff come into the game as the months go by, by here until January, you will see a lot of that kind of dueling and I think it will be a lot of careful dueling with the, with the guided missiles on your own turn because guided missiles can only shoot on your own turn before anyone dares to go and jump straight in and shoot, try to go for the, for the machine gun. The Gatling guns, basically, that each helicopter have to. So it's a little bit of a standoff until you get uh, shooting down enough helicopters that you can finish him off, basically. That's what I'm expecting to see, but that's up to the players to, to play it and see what they do and what they can do. And you also have to factor in everything else. When it comes to Team Yankee, you have the objectives for scenarios, you have the various terrains and, and everything else, the different kind of units that will show up. I mean, this, this weekend we mostly play with tanks, helicopters and a little bit of infantry. But the full game will, of course, feature a lot more anti-air units and you have to factor that in as well. You can also, we can take for example here if um, we have these uh, hunter killer cobras popping off, if they want to shoot at the tanks, the Russian tanks here as you can see, I don't know if that is clear on the cameras, but they each have a 12.7 anti-air machine gun on them. Anti-air machine gun works, they are rate of fire one basically, they are self-protecting weapons. So it's not a massive compared to dedicated AA weapons that you can put up, but at least it's a little bit of defense. So let's say these are trying to pop up and shoot the T-72s. The T-72s are, uh, say, I'm gonna shoot my self-defense anti-aircraft. Uh, roll to hit on the Cobras, which is still hunter killers, so it will be on fives. They will miss one and hit one. Okay, the Cobra aircraft save on five again. It would roll a six if you roll a one instead, for example. Then they can f they do their um, uh, firepower. And a six would be enough for, for that. I think it's a five on a 12.7. I don't have the card here now, but we can check that later. But a six will always do the job. You can even shoot with infantry. What's it? It's a five, yeah, 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 so that, that's enough. So they would actually take away one helicopter shooting at them with their own self-defense machine guns, so like which is nice. Machine gun fire, anti-air machine, does that count as the T-72's fire phase for the next round? Uh, they, it, would, it would preclude uh, firing, yeah, because the tank commander and so on will, will be busy with firing, uh, firing down so the air machine guns, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's exactly like shooting at the aircraft on the aircraft's turn will stop you from firing next turn. But it's one of those things often you might not really have a choice because it's just too dangerous to ignore it. But of course it can be a huge advantage if you, for example, have this situation. You basically have to choose, okay, if the helicopters come and I shoot my anti-air against those, then I'll have to sacrifice shooting at the M1s. And I'll probably be dead whatever I do there, but that's, that's how the cookie crumbles, basically. Now, is there any sort, of a, some, any sort of a system or a mechanic for tracking the number of guided weapon shots that these choppers get? Like, do you actually keep track of, okay, I fired one toe left? No, 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 they, they, they have uh, any ammo you want. It's, it's not like, okay, how many weapon mounts I have. That would make it, for example, for the Cobras, eight of them, four on each side. But you don't need to keep track of that. <coughs> They can shoot as many times. In most games, they probably would shoot 
a slightly less than that. But they might, might shoot six times or something with the guy that misses during a game. So it would be one of those, if you introduce an ammunition counting rule, you would just give yourself a lot of unnecessary headaches for not so much fun reasons. So that's not keeping track of, you can fire away. Uh, okay, firing at tanks is pretty much choose the right kind of weapons. And since the both Cobras and Heinz have very good anti-tank weapons, you would choose that. So if the Heinz here would want to shoot against the M1s, they would go for the 86 spirals. Just roll to hit as normal. There's no concealing here. They would hit once there, and it would be 23 against the front of an M1, which is 18. Four is 22, so it's straight through. Not so good firepower on the spirals here, it's a free plus, so we would actually only bail in there. Uh, tau is also free plus, but they have slightly higher value than even the basic guns, so they can be very lethal, especially if I have a lot of helicopters shooting straight down on a tank platoon, of course. Uh, what else do we have? We have the salvo weapons. Each helicopter comes with uh, tubes of lighter rockets that they just fire for saturation effect. And it basically is a template. I don't know if anyone have their templates. Yeah. Templates right here. We can show you the size of it. So, and, and in this game, you actually can place a template wherever it suits you the best. So, for example, they would like to place it over here. Coming in the direction from the helicopters would be somewhere here. Say so these are not as close because they would. They are not that afraid to shoot in nearby enemy or friendly vehicles. Yeah, they, they seem to take a shot. I think it's two inches in the game or something like that. There they can uh, shoot where friendly friendly guys are near to the to the template. So it's it they can shoot quite close for that. Uh, Salvo, these salvo weapons are not that effective to, against main battle tanks. It's something you would like to use against infantry and lighter armored vehicles instead. For example, the Heinz weapons have anti-tank freeze, firepower 6, and it's one shot only. That given that the uh, M1s have top armor 2, would mean, yeah, it's the, you need to roll a 1 on the armor save for the top armor, then followed by a 6 from the Heinz on their firepower to bail them which is one of those fires you wouldn't take. But as long as there comes some infantry and lighter arm vehicles in there, then you can have fun with the salvo fire. But in this case, against tanks, always shoot the anti-tank missiles, basically. Uh, Sorry, a second ago you said that short cover never gives concealment against the helicopters? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if a unit is not maybe hard to show this for the camera, but if you go, I'll move this to the side a little bit, and it's within four inches of a tall terrain bit like this, then you get concealment um, from both directions basically. So it gets one harder to hit. It never becomes completely hidden from each other but it becomes harder to hit. And it goes both ways. So if this would have been an anti-air unit firing back at the, at the Heinz, it would be one harder to hit. And the same thing going from the Heinz shooting down on it. So if you want to be protected, you should try to have tall terrain between you so and any aircraft. Ignore short terrain and tall terrain acts as short terrain. Yes, yes, pretty much so for aircraft. That, that's correct. Uh, okay, I think that's pretty much it for helicopters and stuff. Is there any more questions or anything? I know several of you have tested with helicopters and so on. Uh, any questions or anything you have come up with during, during testing that so, or uh, hearing about them now? Let's come up. Doesn't look like it, Anders. No, that's good then. Thanks very that's much. That's all for that. me. Thank that's you very perfect. much. And we're looking forward to the later tests of helicopters and troops. Excellent. If you've been enjoying that video, we will be back for, isn't it, one more video today where we're going to be discussing infantry and stuff. We will, yeah. Cheers, Anders. Cheers. Okay. Thanks.